Chapter 1. Meet Henry Green. There are some people who say that Henry Green wasn't really born, but was hatched, fully grown, from a chocolate bean. Can you believe that? Anyway, this particular Henry Green we are speaking of was really born, not hatched, and had a wonderful mom and dad in the bargain. His father was tall and lean and wore eyeglasses, except when he was sleeping or in the shower. Mama Green, whose name was Enid, was a short, slim woman with blue-gray eyes and a tiny mouth that always seemed to be on the verge of a smile. They all lived in an apartment in the middle of the city, along with Henry's older brother and sister. Mark Green was ten and tall and very good to Henry. Mm, except when they would argue, which was often, and then he would hit Henry on the head with anything that was handy, which sometimes was hard. But mostly, Mark was fun to be with and only got angry when Henry called him Marco Polo. Mark didn't like that, and who could blame him? Henry's sister was very, very old, almost 14. She didn't ever argue with Henry or Mark. In fact, she hardly talked to them at all because she was so old and wise and almost grown up. Her name was Elizabeth. <laughs> ah, Elizabeth! The other morning, which was a school day at the end of the week called Friday, Henry, Mark, and Elizabeth were at the table in the dining room having breakfast. Mark was eating fried eggs. Elizabeth was quietly chewing on her usual breakfast of buttery toast and milk and Henry was midway through his usual breakfast too. Chocolate cake, a bowl of cocoa crispy cereal, and milk, with chocolate syrup in the milk to make it more chocolatey, washed down by a big glass of chocolate milk and five or six chocolate cookies. I'm gonna take a second to go back to the picture. Just to see what do we notice, what are they showing us in this picture that's connected to what we're reading about? I notice that Henry is eating his cereal and it's chocolatey. I notice that he is thinking of several different things. I wonder if they're gonna talk about this next. Let's find out. So, washed down by a big glass of chocolate milk and five or six chocolate cookies. Sometimes, when it was left over from the night before, Henry would have chocolate pudding too. And on Sunday mornings, he usually had chocolate ice cream. The truth was that Henry was in love with chocolate, and chocolate seemed to love him. It didn't make him fat. He was a little on the thin side, in fact. It didn't hurt his teeth. He'd never had a cavity in his life. It didn't stunt his growth. He was just about average height, perhaps even a little tall for his age. It didn't harm his skin, which had always been clear and fair. But most of all, it never, never gave him a bellyache. And so his parents, perhaps being not as wise as they were kind, let Henry have as much chocolate as he liked. Wow, does that seem like a good idea? Hmm. Can you imagine a boy having a chocolate bar sandwich as an after-school snack? Well, Henry did, just about every day. And when he ate mashed potatoes, just a few drops of chocolate syrup swished through seemed to make them taste a lot better. Chocolate sprinkles sprinkled on top of plain buttered noodles were tasty too. Not to mention a light dusting of cocoa on things like canned peaches, pears, and applesauce. Hmm, what would your point of view be about eating those things? Would you like to eat chocolate sprinkles on buttery noodles or cocoa on peaches? In the Green's kitchen pantry, there was always a giant supply of chocolate cookies, chocolate cakes, chocolate pies, and chocolate candies of every kind. There was ice cream too, chocolate, of course, and chocolate nut, chocolate fudge, chocolate marshmallow, chocolate swirl, and especially chocolate almond crunch. All of it was just for Henry. If there was one thing you could say about Henry, it was that he surely did love chocolate. Probably more than any boy in the history of the world, his mother said. 
How does Henry like his chocolate? Daddy Green would sometimes joke. Why? He likes it bitter, sweet, light, dark, and daily. And it was true. Up until the day we're talking about right now. Ooh, they're leaving us on a cliffhanger. What's your prediction? What do you think will happen in the second chapter? All right, friends, make sure you are going back into our Schoology course and completing each of the questions, answering each of the questions about this chapter. 